You know that you've made at least one decision right in your life when you get to buy a Jesus and the Apostles playset, tee them up, whack them all with a three wood, and then write it off as a business expense. Now, last Saturday, I had a buddy come up from Florida to do a photo shoot for some of our PR stuff. And of course, that included stuff like headshots and group photos. But we also wanted a few shots that depicted blasphemy. And what says blasphemy better than a little plastic Jesus getting whacked with a golf club? And the little plastic Jesus getting crucified on a dartboard. Exactly. We wrote that off, too. Now, if you're asking yourself, where does one obtain little toy Jesuses for the purpose of driving practice? Then clearly you don't live in South Georgia. We actually have a whole store for that kind of shit. In fact, in our town of about 50,000, there are at least three dedicated Christian stores, and I'm willing to bet that those aren't the only places you can get little plastic Jesuses. So in advance of the photo shoot, Lucinda and I stopped by a, a store near the mall called Christian Life, and I, I have to admit, I felt like I should have been dropping in from the ceiling dressed all in black or something. My, my wife's wearing her short shorts. I don't exactly look like a clean-cut Christian. So even before we went in, I'm treating it like a con. I mean, honestly, I was probably being a bit paranoid, but I don't doubt for a second that the people that run that store would have happily refused my money if they had the blindest clue what I intended to do to poor plastic Jesus. So we went in with a backstory, right? I figured we couldn't pass for Christians, so we played the part of an atheist couple that was looking for birthday presents for a Christian toddler. Or we would have played that part if anybody asked what we were doing anyway. Now, this is the first time I'd ever been in a like a Christian store, and the experience was every bit as bizarre as I thought it would be. But not necessarily in the same way I thought it would be. You know, like I, I was picturing the souvenir shop at Disney World except with Jesus instead of Mickey Mouse. What I found was nothing like that, but it was at least as weird. Let me give you an example. Did you know that red means Jesus' blood, yellow means heaven, and orange means Lord? I know that because I'm reading it off of my, uh, my Blood of Jesus jelly beans from Scripture Candies, Inc. But I could have bought any number of keepsakes that would have reminded me how each color of the spectrum means Jesus in some way or another. By the way, interesting side note, black means sin and white means clean. Take that however you care to. But subtle reinforcements of racism aside, I think it's kind of odd that I saw more rainbow Jesus mnemonics than I saw actual depictions of Jesus. Speaking of things I saw more of than Jesus, we can't ignore the anthropomorphic evangelical vegetable aisle. So something like 15% of the floor space in this store was entirely devoted to VeggieTales videos and merchandise. That's actually where my wife and I went as soon as we could recover from the old lady candle stink that greeted us at the door. And I swear to you, if this store was like your first experience with Christianity, you would be unable to walk out of there without thinking that Bob the Tomato played some integral role in their theology. Now, luckily, there were a few toys that weren't vegan. I mean, we did, after all, acquire the aforementioned Jesus and the Apostles playset. There was also a few toys with the animals in pairs theme. But I'd say that the most fucked up thing I saw in the toy section was the Armor of God playset. Included a shield and a sword so that little Jedediah can play crusades in the backyard or whatever. I, well, you know, I don't know, because there was also a Be Your Own Duck Commander Duck Dynasty playset, too, so... That might be more fucked up. I'm not even sure. Both of those were so insane. I had to tweet out pictures so you can see them if you want. But I didn't want to blow my cover and reveal myself as the kind of person that would tee up Jesus like a Max Fly. So as I took the pictures, I loudly told my wife, I, I said, hey, honey, maybe we should send a picture to his mom and see if he already has a Muslim murdering outfit. Anyway, in the end, we grabbed the playset, which included a boat so that you can recreate the Fishers of Men story. We get a, a small wooden anti-vampire cross deck of Bible rummy cards, and of course, the jelly beans, which come complete with a recommended prayer for you to say as you eat each color of jelly bean in order. By the way, black is for sin. There are no black jelly beans. They're not going to sell you sin at that fucking store, that's for sure. Anyway, there's a lot to process on the way out of that place. And, I, and of course, I'd also force myself not to say fuck or blaspheme against the Holy Spirit for almost half an hour. So once I got all that pent-up sacrilege out of my system, the conversation that we had on the way home was all about how little Jesus there was in that place. You know, that's what we went in for. He was hard to fucking find. There were plenty of rainbow reminders of his sacrifice. There were plenty of talking asparaguses. There were plenty of ever so slightly rebranded trinkets that became religious as soon as you printed a cross or a fish on them. Like, no, look, Ma, this here's a Christian paddle ball. It's all right. 
But with the exception of a few elephants and lions and pears, there was damn near nothing biblical in the whole damn store except for, of course, all the Bibles. And I guess if I'd really thought about it before I walked in, that's exactly what I should have expected. I mean, you know, I knew I wasn't going to find an apocalypse board game or a version of Operation using the Levite's concubine from Judges, but I should have known better than to expect anything that relied on any actual knowledge of scripture or theology. I should have known that the kiddie section would do its damnedest to keep the youngins from wondering what the Bible actually says, and the grown-up section would do its damnedest to obfuscate it. That's why Christian adults can walk around every day comfortable in the delusion that the New Testament is full of a bunch of good moral advice and that Jesus was some revolutionary ethical philosopher. So let me make this clear. The New Testament is in no way more moral than the old one. You know, a smaller percentage of the book is devoted to ethics. The best Jesus advice is nowhere near as good as the best stuff out of Ecclesiastes. And the worst stuff is every bit as bad. It's just that God drowns the world in blood this time instead of water. But of course, the Christians don't know what's in there because they've never read it, and they've never read it because they think they already know what's in there. I mean, why read all trillion pages of this boring fucking book if Larry the Cucumber already paraphrased it for you when you were a kid? So they assume it's filled with loving thy neighbor, turning the other cheek, and being meek. And sure, that stuff makes a guest appearance, but the book itself is about not having recreational orgasms. That is the primary theme of this thing. You know, pretending that it's all about universal love is like pretending the Wizard of Oz is about apple farming. And think about the admission they have to make to get there. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm very happy that they're not giving their children Jesus' guide to psychologically damaging sex negativity in place of a bedtime story. But any Christian who ever chose Veggie Tales over reading from Revelations has already admitted that their book is so immoral that a below average writer can do a better job by computer animating happy faces onto the fucking salad bar doesn't exactly strike me as a ringing endorsement of the perfect word of God.